This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Alright, we're taking out the trash. At night! Oh, are we not actually gonna see Yuji do his work? Why are they just hating- oh yeah, because they cook in our room. <laughs> it's weird how Makina's mouth occasionally moves to her chin. I'm sorry, this is like a five-story Taco Bell that I have to clean, so... Why? <laughs> Look at the enthusiasm on Makina's face right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 10 p.m.? I've already been asleep for five hours by that point. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 10 o'clock is when I start thinking about getting ready for bed, though. I'm old. If she can't find her way back to her room in the same dorm at this hour, I'd, this shit has bigger problems. Don't be creepy, Amine. Same day, same time. You better treat me to Culver's on the way home. Par, par for the course. Nothing to feel guilty about. Yeah. I glance down at the watch on my left wrist. It's 10 p.m. already. And they eat dinner at 7, so there's no way she'll still be waiting at this point. I'm not her boyfriend! <laughs> <laughs> this is better I'll be like, oh, because you didn't go on the Makina route, you were going on the Amine route. And then after you beat one of them, you can unlock the others. <laughs> I really don't think she's that inflexible. What's the point? We'll be at the dorm soon. Does getting in contact all of 10 minutes earlier really make that much of a difference? Getting a lecture about women from JB is distinctly aggravating, but I don't think she's wrong. I take my private cell phone out of my work clothes' breast pocket and pause for a moment in thought. No. Don't think I will, after all. Because I'm not her boyfriend. You're assuming that Amine's still waiting, but there's a chance she gave up hours ago. If I call her now and get, Ah, sorry, I was asleep, it would be pretty damn awkward. I only antagonize girls when they antagonize me, which is like all of them except Sachi. If there's some reason I need to worry about that, I'll take appropriate measures. Yeah. Which route am I going to go for? Uh, hi, Vaz, huh? How's it going? I'm still aiming for the Sachi route first. It's, it's going to be Sachi or Michiru first. Probably Sachi. I can't think of any reason why she'd be angry. I told Amine beforehand that I'd be back late, and I don't remember asking her to wait for me. If she's still waiting anyway, logically speaking, that's nobody's fault but her own. But for some reason, I do feel like I should at least come up with some sort of excuse. Am I losing my edge or something? And the bimbo mobile drops me off. <laughs> I'm not trying to go for JB, no. I don't think she has a route. Appreciate you going out of your way to drop me off. <laughs> Next time another five-story Taco Bell needs cleaning, you just talk to me. Do me a favor and try not to call me out for every little thing, alright? I'm aware. Alright, JB. See you later.
That's a nice necklace you got there. <sighs> what is this all of a sudden? Why are you getting out of the car? Pass. What? Hey, the hell? Suddenly JB twines her arms around me and draws me close, planting a kiss on the side of my face with all of the force and speed of a rattlesnake striking its prey. Yeah. <laughs> Yourself. Seriously nauseating. <laughs> Sorry, JB, this isn't your route. JB lets out a high pitched giggle, unworthy of her years, and swings back into her car, kicking her high heels vigorously up into the air, and then the next moment she's speeding noisily off into the night. What the hell was that all about? When JB acts like that, it means she's up to something. I can't imagine what she possibly hoped to accomplish this time, but it's best to err on the side of caution when dealing with that woman's schemes. Some sort of trap? I mumbled myself uneasily, watching as JB's car dwindles quickly into the distance like a bad boy fleeing the scene of a successful prank. And when I turn around back toward the school, the nature of her snare becomes clear at once. <laughs> How dare you! <gasps> How dare you try to ruin my chances with Sachi! I will kill you for this! Sachi? Sachi stands frozen a little distance away. Her cheeks are flushed red, and she's lightly biting down on her lower lip. And her whole body seems to be trembling slightly. She's holding a white plastic shopping bag in her hand. Probably on her way back from an expedition to the convenience store by the station. No! She's trying to ruin our chances with Best Girl! How dare she! Hey, hold on, Sachi. I'm pretty sure you're misunderstanding something very badly right now. Let me explain. I'm telling you to hold on a second, alright? JB and I aren't, well, our relationship isn't. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> No! No. No, 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 no. No problem. Uh, no, that's not... JB and I aren't... Look, you've got this wrong. She was just screwing around. No! Look, Sachi, can you please just calm down? You already posted it on Facebook. Say what? 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 Yes, you did indeed. No. If anyone does, I will kill them. By whom? Stop pointing at me! Look, just get lost, will you? Michiru is waiting, right? Jeez! For crying out loud. There's no way that was a coincidence. JB must have noticed her. What a malicious prank. The dose was way too strong for a girl with no immunity whatsoever. <sighs> Damn, JB. I think I might need to give that woman a serious scolding one of these days. <laughs> Send her an email from the Nigerian prince. <laughs> what, you're still here? You need something? <laughs> Freaking A. Unbelievable. Every last one of them. Even as I mutter my complaints, I wipe my cheek clean with the cuff of my work uniform. JB's pricey lipstick, visibly distinct from the knockoff stuff students buy in convenience stores, is reduced to a fragrant smear on my sleeve of my pea green shirt. It smells distinctly of a grown woman. As I take a whiff, the cons... The contra... Though the contrastive scent of gunpowder soaked into my uniform also pricks my nose. 
Do I smell? Well, whatever. There's nothing I can do about it right now. Sorry, there was a gunfight in the five-story Taco Bell, and I had to clean it up. <laughs> to be honest, coming back this late, <laughs> coming back late to this sort of slapstick routine is kind of a bear. <sighs> Especially after hours of tension and strain on the job. My feet uh, feel oddly heavy as I walk toward the dorm. I totally butchered that one. No, wait, wait. It's kind of a bear? What is he trying to say there? That's, that's a weird sentence. Back when I was in active duty, I don't think this much would have worn me out. I guess I've probably gone a little soft since I entered this school. Hmm? Ooh, fancy music. Walking past the school building, I was just crossing over the, path, cro the covered pathway leading to the gym when something ahead catches my eye. There's a light on in my window. Amine? She actually waited? There was no guarantee I'd even come back. In the first place, there was absolutely nothing in it for her. Why sit around in an empty room? Does she enjoy wasting her time? When people put a lot of time into something that produces no concrete benefit to them, that activity can often be classified as a hobby. Maybe sitting around patiently is Amine's favorite pastime. There are a lot of bizarre hobbies out there, no doubt, and it's hardly my place to tell Amine how to spend her leisure time. Even so, I have to say she's probably be better off finding some slightly more rewarding pursuit. Of course, whoever I'll ever share that opinion with her is another matter entirely. The instant I open the door to my room, the smell of domestic life floods into my nose. For a moment, I hesitate in the entrance, my hand frozen on the doorknob. The scent of another human being mingles with the lingering smell of some sort of cooking, forming a, gre a greasy, homely mix. When I was a child, and later when I lived with my master, this scent was ubiquitous, natural. But right now it feels alien to me. My room feels strangely unfamiliar. Yeah, I'm home. Slightly averting my gaze from Amine's unexpected smile, I glance up at my wristwatch. It's already past 10 p.m. At my old school, we'd be past lights out by now. Were you waiting for me? What? I glance around the room. The clothes I left scattered on the floor earlier are gone. In exchange, a cleaned, ironed, and neatly folded school uniform sits next to Amine. Uh, yeah. In my line of work, any uniform you wear is expected to be stiff as a board at all times. Get spotted with a wrinkle or two, and your superiors are going to give you absolute hell as a general rule. That's a stupid rule. As a result, I've got an ingrained habit of spraying enough starch on my shirts that you can practically prop them up like a tent after ironing, but I'm pretty sure I've never discussed any of this with Amine before. She probably just noticed my shirts are always crisp and reached that conclusion on her own. Not that this is anything out of the ordinary for her. She's got truly impressive eyes for this sort of detail. She passes over the uniform with a smile. On inspection, there is indeed one button with a slightly different colored thread. It's been sewn on particularly firmly. The sight gives me a strange feeling of deja vu. What's this feeling? Right. Back in elementary school, I'd been wearing a shirt with a loose button when someone stopped me, then proceeded to sew it back on right where I stood. My one and only sister, Kazumi Kazaki. I see. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Now that I think about it, hobbies aren't the only reason people act in unprofitable ways. Family. The word wells up spontaneously somewhere in the depths of my chest. Working for someone else without compensation, without any expectation of gain. Simply out of affection, as if it's the most natural thing in the world. That's what family is. Or so they tell me. No, I haven't eaten anything. Pork time! Yeah. Smiling casually, Amine heads to the kitchen with light, graceful steps. She then places a plate filled with sweet and sour pork and calamari rings in the microwave. Speaking of which, why is there a microwave in my room anyways? I don't remember it being here when I left. For that matter, there's an unfamiliar rice cooker sitting on the shelf next to it. Well, yeah, see, Makina has the American Express gold card, and Amine was like, hey, you should totally buy a microwave. What's with the microwave? I was joking! 
<laughs> Soon I will absorb everyone's kitchens into my own. That rice cooker too? I see. The scent that inspired a moment of unease when I entered the room was probably the traces of fra fragrant steam produced by this small rice cooker. <laughs> Don't question the house supplies, just shut up and take them. <laughs> Even as a kid, I didn't have much in the way of a happy family dinner. But after my parents and sister died, I came to view meals as nothing more than regularly scheduled nutritional supply periods. I mean, at the end of the day, that is kind of what they are. Time to store up energy for my body, except we can make it more than that. And now something inside me shrinks instinctively away from this sort of warm domestic meal. There's always this nagging, almost guilty sense that I don't belong in this picture. Of course, when I was living with my master, there were a few meals like this, but... That woman was fundamentally crappy in the kitchen and rarely bothered to cook a full-fledged meal. The food she served me wasn't inedible, but it was almost never what you could call tasty, either. JB would occasionally stop by on a whim and whip up something, and the food was definitely an improvement, but it was hard to get too emotional about it knowing I was going to be cleaning up the mess she always left in the kitchen. Hey, Amine. Hmm? I think I've asked this before, but why do you stick to me so persistently? <laughs> Do you really expect me to be satisfied with that explanation? Because it's way too convenient a story. Can't help feeling a little skeptical. A beauty with huge obobs falls in love with me at first sight, then unilaterally lavishes attention on me out of sheer affection. I'm not quite wet enough behind the ears to swallow this shoddy manga-style setup. There's something else behind this. I don't think this is me being paranoid. It seems like common sense. <laughs> oh, tons! <laughs> I've never dated anyone in my life. Well, I guess. Can't deny that I've got gaps in my knowledge. If she declares this is just how women are these days, I don't have enough points of reference to mount a rebuttal. I mean, you have a fair point there, Amine. It's just... I don't think this is the right time to be mentioning that. We're also the only guy. We're literally her only option. You have a point. As the result of ignoring a reality it didn't want to accept, this country once marched blindly into a crushing defeat, mouthing flowery rhetoric about inevitable victory the whole way. In the same way, dismissing a perspective you can't understand as ridiculous is just an egotistical refusal to admit other ways of looking at the world exist. At the very least, I have to acknowledge that my values aren't universal. Tell me something, Amine. Do you really love me? No hesitation whatsoever. And yet, her words still ring hollow in my ears. Is the problem on my end? Well, fine. I guess there's at least one woman out there deranged enough to fall in love with a man like me. I'll accept that as reality. I'm not going to accuse you of lying, that's all. I still don't understand why you feel the way you do, and there's no change in the fact that I find the overly convenient women vaguely nauseated. <laughs> if I started lying to you out of compassion and dating you out of pity, would you really be happy? True! You're one hell of a tough, proactive woman, you know that. To be honest, I'm envious. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Priorities. I bring my hands together in front of the food Amine zapped with loving care in the microwave, give her my thanks, and move my chopsticks toward the plate. Sweet and sour pork and fried squid. It's one hell of a strange combination, thematically speaking, but the taste itself is impeccable as ever. 
Her skill at cooking is superb, and in contrast to her seemingly rough, careless attitude, she is unusually attentive to small details and highly considerate of others' needs. A good woman, any way you look at her. Yeah, except, um... <coughs> uh, yeah, I... Do I need to say it? Of course, I think that's the exact reason I can't rid myself of my doubts. Why would she fall in love with me, of all people? It's delicious. So, you got that? Whatever the case may be, I think Amine's smile is probably genuine, and that's why it makes me feel like there's a thorn stabbing in my chest. Do I even deserve to be loved? I understand that I'm overthinking things, but I can't stop. Every time I get on this train of thought, I start wondering what I'm even living for, whether there's any real meaning in my survival. I start thinking, that must be a pretty, pretty pathetic excuse for a human being, if I can't believe in that smile. What's with all this self-deprecation? When you get down to it, my master was right. I'm still just a punk kid. Just as my mouth begins to loosen into a self-deprecating smile, the sound of a cell phone's message alert resounds inside the room. I instinctively reach my hand into the breast pocket of my work clothes, but the sound didn't come from my phone. Which would mean... Amine takes out the cell phone she'd left carelessly in the pocket of her jeans, opens it, and peers down at the LCD screen. Oh no. Sachi, if you're spreading the word around... It seems the message was sent from Koma Sachi's email address. At that name, my chopsticks abruptly stop dead in midair. For some reason, I have a bad feeling about this. Mm. Sachi, if you're gossiping around after you said you wouldn't. Apparently finished with Sachi's message, Amine quietly brushes up her long hair with her free hand. <laughs> Amine holds out her cell phone for my inspection. Naturally, Sachi's email is displayed on the screen. From Sachan to Suo Amine. Subject, I can't say a thing. Message, and I didn't see a thing. The contents of the email are that single short line. The problem lies in the image attached to it. It's a camera phone, a snapshot, taken only a little while ago. Quite a skillful piece of work, really. In front of the school gate, JB's pressing her lips into my cheek, both arms twined around me. Well, that was... Uh, wow, Sachi, really? Involuntarily, I follow, swallow the food in my mouth along with a lump of spit. It goes down my throat like a rock. Okay, Sachi, what happened to not saying anything to Amine? I mean, I guess she didn't technically put it in words, but... Well, this is Sachi we're talking about. I doubt she did this for the malicious pleasure of it. The burden of keeping the secret was just too heavy for her to bear. In agony with guilt over Amine's ignorance, she probably took advantage of this dubious loophole out of sheer desperation. It was just a stupid prank of JB's. Itazura? Well, uh, let's see. It's kind of a long story, but that's pretty much just how she is. Mind going into that long story of yours? What exactly were you doing with JB at that front gate? That's the logical next question for Amade to ask, but... JB is a naturally wicked woman, prone to harassing me in this way at unexpected moments just so she can smirk at my ag uh, agitation. Would be my explanation, I guess, but it hardly seems enough to satisfy Amine. Unfortunately, it also happens to be the truth, so there is not much I can do about it. Yeah, I was. Uh, wait, that doesn't mean this is my job, okay? It isn't. I don't care if Amine thinks that, by the way. Saying that and that alone, Amine closes the cell phone in her hand with a snap, not betraying any particular interest. I sort of expected you to ask me about the job at this point. I told you, I work for a cleaning company, right? Mm. Today, we were cleaning a 20-story building in Tokyo, but... Well, this big rat appeared when we were still getting set up, so everyone ended up chasing it around. Thing was, though, the rat was unexpectedly nimble. We ended up losing sight of it entirely. If we just let the thing get away, it'd eventually pop out of its hole again and cause more havoc. And our client was telling us, I can't sleep at night when that rat's on the loose, and all that. So we ended up splitting up to track the thing down, but for a rat, it was pretty sly. It took a good three hours before we found it again and finally exterminated the thing. I'm intentionally replacing certain nouns with metaphorical analogies, but the information I'm giving to Amine is otherwise roughly accurate. Really? <laughs> I really did spend three hours running through an intricate web of sewers under Tokyo in hot pursuit of a rat. Incidentally, a gas mask does absolutely nothing to improve the smell of raw sewage. So basically, technically true from a certain point of view. Yeah, I guess it was. But, uh, that's all you have to say? 
After promising I'd have a meal with her, I ran off to work, and all of a sudden, then stayed late without giving her a call, not that I possibly could have, leaving her to wait in vain for hours. And to top it off, her reward for this patience is a picture of me flirting around with my boss. But she's not planning to say a word of complaint. I mean, I'm putting up a bit of a defensive front and all, but even I recognize that this is, she kind of got shafted on this one. If she grumbled a little bit, I was pretty much ready to give her a proper apology. But this indifferent response is well outside the range of my expectations. To be honest, it's inspiring some serious unease on my part. Generally, aren't women more, you know, jealous creatures? I'm not exactly an expert, but I've known a few females in my time. As I understand them, women tend to be more selfish about things like this. To the point of irrationality, even. You don't have any questions about any of that. Huh? This is weird. That's not it, but... でも、そうする必要があったから、あんたはそうしたんでしょ？Yes。だったら何も間違っていないじゃない。You're taking this remarkably well. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess not, but I mean, it's weird to be understanding about this. She's being so reasonable that it's somehow making me feel increasingly guilty about the whole thing. It's kind of a complicated feeling. Huh? <gasps> All of a sudden, some kind of switch seems to have been flipped inside of Amine. Her eyes narrow to slits and her lips jerk up with the very picture of a smirk. <laughs> no, that's really not. <laughs> oh boy. Spare me. Nope. This woman, exactly how serious is she about this? No, I think the real question is, how badly is she underestimating men? Alright, Amine, close your eyes. Ugh. <laughs> Clearly confident this is nothing more than a bluff, Amine closes her eyes, jerks her chin up, and fearlessly sticks out her lips. This girl's looking down on me. Maybe I should teach her a lesson. Okay, another decision, folks. This actually might put us on the Amine route if we answer incorrectly. <laughs> I mean correctly. This calls for shock and awe. Steal a kiss with overbearing force. This is idiotic. Can't let myself get up caught up in her nonsense. Boom! <laughs> this is completely idiotic. If I get caught up in Amine's nonsense and let her coax me into kissing her, it's all too obvious that the reparations show exact in the aftermath will leave me in staggering debt. As Amine waits patiently, her eyes closed and lips puckered like an actress in a lipstick commercial, I reach out and give her a full force flick to the forehead. <laughs> wow! Moron! Did you really think I, of all people, would fall for such a blatant trap? <laughs> You're the one who said you'd be satisfied playing my big sister, you know. Sisters don't pester their little brothers for a kiss on the mouth. I'm not saying that, I'm just saying normal sisters don't do that. Uh, well, yeah, I guess there's probably a few out there. But that's a seriously rare case! <laughs> <laughs> Don't start playing some incoherent character from an incest-themed porno. You're just trying to push this through by force. This is legit sickening. Are you drunk? Ugh. In my line of work, what, you scared, is a phrase you don't want to hear under any circumstances. No matter what unreasonable reckless action you're being encouraged to take, the instant that question gets voiced, you have to spit out, HELL NO, and immediately leap into action. If you back down in the face of a taunt like that, your reputation among the group will plummet inevitably, or irretrievably. But we can't forget about the wonderful concept of tactical withdrawal, a dignified retreat when the situation calls for it, is no act of cowardice. This is just such a case. Anyway, it's late. Head back to your own room already. <laughs> Wanna finish that sentence? 
I'm grateful to you for the meal and the sewing and everything else, to the extent that I really can't express it in words. But this isn't the same as a romantic relationship. You're an adult woman. I think you can grasp the distinction yourself, right? What? Okay. I can take care of my own dishes. These aren't the same thing at all. What a tyrant. こんな都合のいい女なんて他にはいないんだからね。感謝しろとは言わないけど、あんまり雑に扱わないのよ。いい。いや、ない。The but the way Amine suddenly shows up and starts doing the housework without being asked, only to get hopping mad over something, preach at me for a while and then vanish as quickly as she came, it inspires a definite sense of deja vu. Specifically, her fierce pushiness and burning desire to take care of others reminds me strongly of JB. If I'm comparing her to JB, who's been something like family since I was a kid, I currently don't dislike Amine. Honestly, I enjoy her company. But it's also undeniable that I have a hard time seeing her as a love interest. How can I put this? Well... Like I said, she feels more like... family. Something like my older sister was to me when she was still alive. Something like my master. Something like JB. Amine's become someone I care about in that way. And that's exactly why I can't thoughtlessly take advantage of her. I don't want to end up making her cry. Wow. Those are my honest feelings right now. That is not how I was thinking, but you know what? We're very different people. 